This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Drobo. Smart storage that grows with you and protects what matters. Get 10% off your Drobo at drobostore.com using the offer code MV10. Welcome to the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we have yet again one of our gift panels for the holidays. In fact, this may be the last one, depending on uh, exactly how it plays out. We might be able to get one more in for some of the very, very, very last-minute stuff. But don't wait. Take the advice of of our panelists here and go out and shop and and get it done. Uh, You know the routine by now, so I'm just going to jump right in, go around and let you know who you're going to hear from on this panel. Uh, First up. Mr. Greg Scown from Smile. Greg, it's great to have you. Thanks so much for being here. Chuck, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so Smile has, has, I mean, everybody knows Smile. What is there to say? Uh, we are the makers of PDF Pen and Text Expander, and we're found at smilesoftware.com. That's great. That's great. Modest as usual, Greg. <laughs> um, I don't even know how to introduce the next one, except uh, you, he just looks so festive. I can barely stand it, Mr. Josh Centers. <laughs> and a ho 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 to you, Chuck. Thanks yes. for having me on again. It's great to see you, Josh. Good seeing you, Chuck. So, what what are you doing uh, when you're not uh, helping Santa? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the managing editor of Tidbits at tidbits.com. I've uh, been with uh, quality independent Mac journalism for the past 23 years. We are currently in the member in the middle of our membership drive for the year, which uh, pays my salary and helps support uh, all the great content we've had for the past couple of years on Tidbits and has made us self-sufficient. And also, I am currently authoring a my first Take Control title, Take Control of Apple TV, which uh, will, is due out in January. And Tidbits members can read it now at tidbits.com. Uh, we're streaming one chapter every week. Very cool. Very cool. It's and great. Smile is, in fact, a sponsor of Tidbits, and we offer yes, 20% sir. off our software titles to all and I thank Tidbit you, sir. members. <laughs> so if you join Tidbits, then you'll get 20% off our software. Yes, and it's a great deal. You'll save, you can save a lot of money on software. There you go. The uh, the third member of our panel is new to the Mac jury, but certainly not new to Mac Voices, Wally Cherwinski. Wally, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Chuck, it's great to be back. Yeah. So, so what should we give you uh, title to? I know what I would give you title to, but I'll let you talk for yourself. Well, we'll compare notes, won't we? Yeah. I guess I describe myself as a videographer and an Apple enthusiast. And these days I'm writing a monthly video column for Don McAllister's excellent Screencast Online monthly magazine. Uh, screencastonline.com. He's got some great writers, Katie Floyd, uh, David Sparks, uh, Allison Sheridan, and of course, Don with his uh, wonderful video tutorials. And of course, the credit I would absolutely give you is uh, as the editor of some of the some of the more sophisticated videos for the Macworld All-Star Band at, uh, at Macworld Expo and Macworld iWorld. That is a lot of fun, and I know, uh, Chuck, I enjoy working with you on that program, and uh, I'm looking forward, as usual, to Macworld in March, as I'm sure you are, too, and hopefully we can uh, add a little bit of punch to it this year and come up with some surprises. Yeah, I've got some ideas myself, so we'll... Oh, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wally, one thing before we, we get into this. Yeah. What is Josh's uh, blinking Christmas tree going to do to the compression on this video? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, it's it's nicely blinking in the background and i don't think it's going to blow out a lot of highlights at all it's going to work fine all right good good yeah very subdued that's Relief. texture that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well guys we're here to talk about holiday gift guides and and i've supplied you all with a list of things from the previous uh jury panels um which in some ways may limit your limit your selections but on the other hand i haven't had anybody really say that they were limited there everybody seems to have some great ideas of their own so let's let's just get right to it and we'll go in the same order to start um that uh, you were introduced in greg you get top billing Okay, then I'm going to start with a stocking stuffer actually and uh, the stocking stuffer i have for offer is fantastical 2 for ios for your iphone from Good flexibits choice. Um, and it's just a fantastic piece of software, calendaring as it should be done, iOS interface, fantastic. Um, and also, one of the fun things you can do with it is uh, it allows you to enter calendar entries via natural language processing. And 
it, it has sort of a standard text input field, you can actually use dictation to enter your natural language things. So, uh, Mac jury at 5 p.m. on Monday, for example. It, it, I, I think we're all getting more comfortable talking to our devices, and especially in public, um, <laughs> <laughs> which for a little while, it's like, I'm not quite so sure about that. But I hardly give it a thought anymore, Greg. Mm -hmm. So, I, I guess, uh, does that mean I'm self-involved, or does it mean the world is more accepting of it? I don't know. I suppose maybe it depends on where you lived. I used to do Spanish lessons with an iPod while I ran in Berkeley. But, you know, talking to yourself while you're on the street in Berkeley is just not that strange. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. <laughs> Good point. Good point. So it may all be relative. Yeah. Nice pick, though. Nice pick. It's yeah. Fantastic Hell is a great app. In fact, it's good yeah. enough to be on the front page of my, uh, my home page of my iPhone. So... Good oh yeah, choice. home screen app for me as well. You bet. Yep. Same here. Yep, it's a it's a great app. And with Fantastic Hell too, they added uh, reminder support, so you have a two and one. And they, uh, at least on the Mac version, they recently added the ability to add due dates um, or is it start dates? Start dates to Fantastic Hell too. So yeah, it's just, yeah, the Mac version is great too. It's just a great all around package. Way better than iOS 7's uh, default calendar app. And it's just three ninety nine on the App Store, and it's something you can easily give as a gift. And I love the iOS 7 look and feel of uh, Fantastic Hal 2 also. Yeah. Wow, so we got bringing endorsements there for Fantastic Hal. That's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's great. Okay. This podcast sponsored by Fantastic Hal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they want to, I can tell them who to connect with. <laughs> Josh, uh, how about you? I, you're, you're sipping the eggnog, so I'm sure you're getting more into the spirit. Well, I'm, I'm still perfectly lucid, yet full of good cheer. And uh, my first pick... Is, is a bit biased, but I think it makes a fantastic present, and that is the Apple TV, which retails for about $99. Uh, you can get one refurbed for about $85. And it's just, I mean, if you know somebody who has an iPod, iPhone, iPad, Mac, it's the ultimate Apple accessory. I mean, uh, you know, iTunes Video, AirPlay, it's just a great thing to have, and it's relatively inexpensive, which makes it a pretty good, I mean, it's a nice gift, but it's not so much that's a ridiculous thing to give somebody. Um, it's, uh, and as far as Apple's devices go, it's pretty cheap, actually, and there's so many capabilities you can do with it. It just opens up a whole new world. Um, you know, you can put uh, your photos up on it. You use it, use your photos as a screensaver, um, you know, put music on it, you know, fill your whole house with music. It's It's just a great device to have, and Makes for a very nice gift. Josh, I'm shocked we've gotten this far in these gift panels and someone hasn't picked it out from under you. So I know. You know <laughs> I was surprised. Nicely choice. played. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> great choice. And I and I, I echo everything Josh said. I've got okay. one on every screen in my house. Uh and, and I've used them all. Great great device. Great device. And I guess that you could use them to play some of Wally's creations if you wanted to. So, Indeed, yes. Wally, how was that for a segue? I love it. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, video gifts that, that you can give, particularly for someone with an iPhone who likes to shoot video. Um, the iPhone gives you fantastic quality video, 1080p, 30 frames per second, and really good image quality. Problem is, the guy behind the iPhone isn't always really steady when he shoots, or she shoots. So uh, it's an age-old problem, uh, coming up with shots that are really stable, rock solid, and steady. So the answer is, you need some sort of an assistance or some aid to attach your iPhone to. Well, I found a lot of... Um, uh, tripod mounts that want you to take your iPhone out of your case. Well, I don't like to do that. I prefer to keep it in the case. But I've run across some that are really effective. This one, for example, is from Joby, the people who make the Gorillapod. And this is really neat because you just flip it this way, flip it that way, and on the bottom you've got your tripod mount. The good thing is it's flexible. So you can put your iPhone in there, and it's not going to fall out. So what you can do is then attach it to your little Gorillapod, 
And there you have a great little system to stabilize your phone. Set it up and press the button and away you go. Now the Joby people make a lot of uh, different models of Gorillapod. In fact, so many that you really have to go to their site, joby.com, and have a look at the different things they sell. This is a very small one, and this is made for the iPhone. They make another little model for small video cameras. You notice it's got a, an arm here that you can tilt and swivel. These things are rather inexpensive. They're on the order of $25, $30 each. And if you're going to do a lot of iPhone video, they're fantastic. Here's another one. This one is from iStabilizer. Again, about 25 bucks. Same thing. Pull the arms apart. Put your iPhone in there. It holds it very securely. This one doesn't collapse like the other one. What I like about that one is the fact that you can fold it up, stick it in your pocket. Very neat. Very nice. Very nice. Here's a, um, I, I'm going to give you one more for the iPhone. And if you're going to do some shooting with the iPhone, this one is pretty neat. You can use it with your um, Joby mount. It's got a screw thread on the top. And this one is called the iPole from FastCap.com. What does this one do? Well, you can attach your phone this way and just use it as a grip and a holder. Or, here's where the fun begins. The telescopes. So, and it's got a swiveling head. So you can tilt it back and do one of the famous selfies if you want. You can do video or stills. Um, and it's a great little rig, very portable, put it, put it in your pocket, put it in your suitcase, takes up no room at all. Again, it's about 25 bucks. And finally, if you want to carry all this stuff around, this is one of the best bags I've found. It's a National Geographic. It's called the Earth Explorer Small Sling Bag. So there's a sling. It's got little Velcro pockets, so you can put uh, extra batteries, SD cards, whatever. It's got two pockets with Velcro on top and a zipper pouch, so you can put uh, and a, a pocket around the back for a passport, wallet, whatever. So you can put your phone, you can put your Gorillapod, your tripod mount, anything else you want to hear, even a small lunch. Uh, this one is about $50. Fantastic bag, sling it over your shoulder, away you go on a, a, a day outing. Great, There's a lot of th interesting things there. And Wally, I especially like the one, that, the telescopes, simply because not only can you do selfies, but you can get different angles on the camera that, you know, you can't do unless your arms are like really, really long. Uh, you know, and, that, and that's, that's always, it makes the video more interesting. Good point, Chuck, especially with this swiveling head. So you can do something interesting. You've got to be careful when you do this, but you can get it down low and do long angle shots. Obviously, I can't show you that. Um, you and can use it as a non regulation golf putter. You could do that too. Probably not a great choice for your iPhone, but nonetheless. But if you mount your iPhone this way, you can hold it horizontally and get one of those shots. Again, mm -hmm. that stabilizes it. Or, see if I can show you this, eh, maybe not quite. Or you can hold it against your chest and brace it that way and you get some extra stability when you shoot. Neat. Okay. Great. Lots of options there, lots of options. And, yep. and, and Greg, I have to tell you, that that's an interesting idea. I can I can see this action shot as, you know, the, put, the putter going back and then coming up and stroking the ball. I like that. I, like <laughs> I that. suspect Apple Care doesn't cover that, but... Probably not. I would only want it for short putts. <laughs> Apple Care Plus. Apple Care Plus will cover it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they'll look up your YouTube channel and say, "No chance, buddy. No chance." <laughs> you wait to post it. You get you get the new iPhone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, my first round pick um, is something that I've had now for a little while. It's my absolute favorite iPhone dock. 
It's called the Custom Core Tilt Dock, and it's probably not something you've seen unless you saw me interview the folks from um, from Icor at uh, CES earlier this year. Because their whole projects were starting up as a Kickstarter, and um, I, I've I told them how much I liked it, so they sent me one, and I absolutely love it. What's great about it, first of all, is it comes in 30-pin connectors, um, you, mini USB if you have something other than iPhone. God knows why you would have anything other than iPhone. Um, 30-pin connectors, lightning connector, everything. So I, I don't know about you guys, but I always get a little bit nervous having my phone like just hanging by the connector. I've, I've never liked that. This has a, a, a tilt back to it so that when, once you plug it in, the phone will will tilt back and rest there, so it's got a lot of a lot of extra support if you're going to say charge it overnight. Um, but the best thing about this one is, and we all know that the you know when you put the iPhone down in, no matter which connector you're using, it doesn't always come out necessarily real easily. The the base of this is nice and heavy, but more importantly, they've got one of those composite materials on the base that adheres to pretty much any surface. Doesn't mar the surface, doesn't leave any residue, but it just it holds it so that you really have to kind of work at it maybe with a credit card to actually get it off of your nightstand. Um, and so, you know, I can drop it in there, rip it out when if it's ringing or whatever, and I don't have to worry about what I'm going to break or is the dock going to come with it and is the cable going to come out of the wall and all. Um, it's $69, so it may be a little pricier than some docks, but I really, really love it. And I would suggest that if you – oh, and it comes in black and white too, so whatever your preference. So go check it out. And I should say at this point, and I should have said it before, and I'm sorry, um, but again, if you have been watching these juries, you know that we'll have links in the show notes to everything that is picked here. So you can just come to the Mac Voices site, jump right off, and do all your holiday shopping that way. Okay, so that's round one. Um, so let's, uh, let's start with round two. Josh, how about if we set you up as number one this time? Okay, I, I'm going to pick one that's that's a little odd, but I think is relevant with the current news. It's called Spyblock, and you can't buy it. It's a um, it's a blueprint or um, a configuration file. I'm not sh quite sure what you call it in that world, but it's for a MakerBot 3D printer, and it was designed by Christopher Poole, aka Moot, uh, who founded 4chan. And what it is, it's a little plastic clip that. Um, that you put over your your monitor or your laptop's webcam to block it out. And as we've learned recently in the news, the FBI has the capability to tap into your computer and hijack your webcam without you ever knowing it. So um, some people take electrical tape and put it over the lens, but that's that's kind of a sticky solution. So instead, if you have a maker bot or know somebody who has one, I'm sure people will be selling these things. You can um, you can print one of these things out and just clip it onto your monitor or to your laptop, your MacBook, and uh, don't have to worry about the FBI spying on you. So you're just you're buying the the blueprint, Josh? Oh, it's free. the the blue The blueprint for it is free, and if you have uh, one of these three D printers, or if you know somebody who has one, and like I said, I'm sure somebody will start selling these any day now. I just saw this today. This is just released today. So yeah, uh, you can just print it out for free and uh, stick it on your monitor, on your on your laptop, and uh, feel a little bit more secure. Very interesting. That's your stocking stuffer offering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it does it fit just Max or is this uh, adjustable in some way? Uh, forgive me because I don't know what it looks like. But yeah, it, it, I don't think it's adjustable. It's just a plastic clip. What, they show it on specifically MacBooks. I'm guessing it'll work with any thinner monitor, any thinner um, uh, laptop with the with the webcam built on. So yeah, just uh, slide that over it and uh, and uh, it blocks it out. I never know what you guys are going to come up with. <laughs> <laughs> I want to throw a curveball in there. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Greg, how about uh, how about your second pick? Okay, um, I'm afraid mine also a bit of a curveball. It's in the realm of cooking and technology. Uh, so I like to cook, um, and uh, I occasionally like to cook red meat, not too often. Uh, and one of the things that tends to happen when you do that is you overcook the outside and undercook the inside. That's pretty standard for what you wind up with a burger that's perfectly medium rare in the center and overcooked all on the outside. Uh, and the technological solution to this is to cook it in a water bath under vacuum in a style called sous vide. Uh, 
Um, and you can actually do this at home, and there are very expensive machines for you to do it with, but uh, there is an alternative. If you have a slow cooker, plain old boring slow cooker, on and off, or on, off, high and low, um, you can attach it to the sous vide temperature controller from Dork Food, D O R K F O O D dot com. I am serious and I did not name the company. <laughs> um, and <laughs> although I do appreciate the name, and it has a plug that goes into your outlet, and then you plug your slow cooker into it, and it has a temperature probe that you place into the water that you put into the slow cooker, and it controls precisely the temperature of the water. So, if you take your burger, put it in a Ziploc bag, submerge the Ziploc bag in water to evacuate the air, and then seal it once you've evacuated the air, you then put them into the water in your slow cooker, and it holds the temperature at something exact. So, if you want a medium rare burger, then you cook it at 135 degree water bath for an hour up to four hours. Um, and no matter what point along that hour to four hours you pull that burger out, it will be perfectly medium rare. You can take it in a nice hot cast iron pan, sear it closed, and off you go. Um, and so there are numerous other things you can cook in there. I've done the moistest chicken breasts I've ever done, um, and it's just neat. So it's, it, the temperature controller itself is only $99, which is a, a Farsight discount compared to $500 for a sous vide machine. Um, and you know, it's simple, straightforward, and something that you can do at home. So in, you know, also, it's low enough that the cost of exploration is not so bad. So I bought it to explore, and I really love it. So. That's that's absolutely brilliant because I've yeah. wanted a sous vide machine for a long time and they used to be around eight hundred dollars and the other day I was cooking a roast in a crock pot and I thought well, why do I need an expensive machine to do this why why can't I just regulate the temperature in this crock pot and that's it perfect I'm, I'm still getting one of those we'll be at your house for dinner Greg <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready yeah I think you just cost me money too Greg because I, I like Josh I've been looking at sous vide since I could get I just can't justify it then I've looked at some of the DIY things that let you you know do it but nothing that regulates it that easily and precisely the, the two things I've learned is one I take a, a bag clip like you know the chip clips and I put the probe in that so that the probe doesn't sit right on the bottom of the um, slow cooker. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that I read, and I have not tried this, is that other people are using the same controller with a, um, you know, those giant coffee makers, uh, like the, the percolators that you find in the church basement. Like, those are apparently the, the new bulk sous vide machine. <laughs> so, you know, not just a slow cooker, but apparently you can use those as well. Wow. And on an earlier uh, show, I picked some of Alton Brown's DVDs, and I, I think Alton would be proud of this solution. Excellent. I think so, yeah. And, and one more time, the company is Dork Food, D O R K F O O D.com. I just and wanted to It's also available via Amazon for uh, Amazon Prime. I just wanted to hear you say it one more time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wally, second round, what do you got? Okay, well, we've had two curveballs. So I, I'm thinking here, should I throw a slider, a fastball, or a knuckleball? I don't know. Maybe a slider. Um, I like to cycle in the summer. I, I go out on my bike for a couple of hours, and it's a wonderful time to listen to podcasts and uh, audiobooks and just enjoy life. But um, I've always had a problem finding earbuds or headphones that fit properly, especially when you've got a bicycle helmet where you don't want something that wraps over your head because you can't put the helmet on properly. And I find the Apple earbuds fall out of my ears very easily. I guess I'm just anatomically incorrect. <laughs> However, I stumbled on this this summer and I was skeptical at first. But amazingly, they gave great results, and it looks like this. It's called a Sprung, S-P-R-N-G. It's a, a, just a little rubbery attachment that goes onto the base of your earbuds. The theory is you put in your ear and just clip the top part underneath the top of your ear, and it doesn't fall out. Mm. Amazing. Canadian invention, I have you know. Uh, Ten bucks, shipping included. 
They're just fantastic. I use them all summer, put them in, they never fell out. Easy in, easy out. So it essentially it holds the bud in with a little extra pressure? Is that the idea? Like by levering it off your ear? You actually hardly even feel the pressure. It's just a whisper of pressure, mm -hmm. uh, but just enough to lever it in there properly. I, again, as I said, I was skeptical when I got them. I figured for 10 bucks, it's worth the gamble. Mm -hmm. And uh, I put them on, and I was amazed how well they worked. And, and that is from sprungclip.com, S-P-R-N-G clip.com. Again, the link will be in the show notes. And along with that, of course, there's a challenge of what do you play your... Um, uh, your music or your uh, audiobooks on. Well, this was my favorite device, and I'm still mad at Apple for discontinuing the old iP iPod Nano because it was wonderful. It had the clip, and you could clip it onto your clothes. And of course, they came out with this one. Well, it's okay, but I like the other one better. But what makes this all doable is this. This is a Scotty Vest shirt. And the nice thing is, it's got a little zipper pocket up here that you can put your iPod into, connect your headset, zip it up, and it won't fall out, and away you go. And the cord isn't tangled up with anything, and the placement of that pocket is absolute genius. I just love the thing. They come in uh, many colors, $30. Um, they're from scottyvest.com. You can get them with a, a polo shirt collar. You can get long sleeves or short sleeves, and they're fantastic for uh, jogging, exercising, or just hanging out in the summer and putting your iPod Nano into. ScottyVest.com. Very nice. I, yeah. I've, and and I, I think what I better do is I better make my fourth round pick uh, something in conjunction with Wally's because he might take it next time. Uh -oh. <laughs> and that's because I have, I have on my list the Scotty Vest Travel Vest. Um, I've, I've not familiar with that shirt, but I love the travel vest. Um, I've, I've, even in the middle of the summer, I pull it on. Ah, while well, he's got one, there you go. See, that's why I picked it because I knew he'd take it from me. Um, but yeah, I love the iP iPad pocket, full iPad right that, in there. That's the thing, a full iPad, um, you know, iPhone, there's a, there's a particular pocket for your iPhone that has, um, a film over it so that you can still control the iPad or excuse me, the iPhone in your pocket. It's got a built in channel, uh, as in uh, re recessed channel for earphones so that you can just put a pair of earphones in the jacket and have them there all the time. This thing has more pockets. I don't know what the total count is 30 or 40 pockets. And at some point, you have to try to figure out, you know, you can lose stuff in the vest if you're not careful. But you you get on, and, and the best thing about Scotty Vest, though, is the travel vest, is I put everything in the vest and then take it off the checkpoint. And other than my belt and my shoes, it all goes right through. I pick the vest up, and it's all right back there. I don't have to worry about putting anything into the little bowls and maybe forgetting it or losing it or having it dump out. They're, they're all in there. Most of the pockets are completely secured by zippers, so you don't have to worry about that part of it. And they, they, they come in a couple models and materials. Um, so if you're going to do winter travel, you probably want a heavier one. If you're going to do a lot of summer travel, the lighter one. But they're just an absolute dream, a, a, a tech traveler's dream. So if you do a lot of traveling or if you just want to carry a lot of tech with you and not have to deal with a backpack or anything like that, this is the way to go. $125. And as while we said, scottyvest.com. Yeah, I, uh, I couldn't agree with you more, Chuck. I, I've got jackets, I've got pants, I've got socks. I even have Scotty Vest underwear in my <laughs> closet. Yeah, believe it or not, with two Scotty Vest pockets, one in the front and one in the back. I'm not quite sure what you're supposed to put in them, but um, but I am a huge fan. I, I've been we wearing the stuff for years. It wears like uh, iron. It's fantastic stuff. And in fact, I, uh, I think I've been in three of their annual catalogs now. I've had my picture in three of their Scotty Vest catalogs wearing my stuff. So great, great equipment, especially for travel. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to look for you. I don't bother with the paper catalogs, but I'll have to look and see. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Okay. I had considered using it to uh, making past the TSA checkpoint easier. That's uh, that's an interesting use case. 
Yeah, in fact, uh, Scott Jordan got into a little trouble advertising uh, his Scotty vest that way and trying to get around that uh, uh, TSA business. And they uh, they had a little bit of a squabble publicly over that. But he was adamant that that's a great use for it. Uh, pack it up with all kinds of stuff. Put it on the conveyor belt. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, they can scan it. If, uh, if your uh, uh, carry-on luggage is too heavy, and they say, no, sorry, you're going to have to charge you extra. Well, just take some stuff out. Put it in your Scotty vest pockets, and away you go. That's why they don't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't imagine. I mean, because if I take all the stuff out of my pockets and stick it in my, my backpack. I know. It's still that, you know, so what's the difference? I just I know. If, as if soon I, as you get through, you put it all back again. Yeah. Are, <laughs> are they paid by the hour? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So that's uh, that's two rounds, and we're we're making great time. This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Drobo. Smart storage that grows with you and protects what matters. Get 10% off your Drobo at drobostore.com using the offer code MV10. This time around, let's talk about the Drobo 5N, the network-attached Drobo. Yeah, this may get a little geeky in places, but I'll try to translate so that you know that the 5N isn't just for geeks. In fact, it might be the best solution for the non-geeks out there. Here we go. First, the Drobo 5N is a NAS. That's geek speak for network attached storage, and that's geek speak for a drive that connects to your Macs over your home wireless network. Only two cables to deal with, the power and the ethernet connection to your airport or router. That's all. The Drobo 5N has five drive bays and can handle up to 20 terabytes of storage, but you can start with as little as two terabytes. Translation, Drobo 5N is expandable. And with more drives, you can configure the Drobo for single or dual drive redundancy. Translation, you can choose to protect your data if up to two drives fail. Not likely, but possible. Drobo gives you the choice of doubling your protection, and you can change it at any time. No reformatting or re-anything required. Just flip a virtual switch. You can equip your 5N with an MSATA SSD as a performance accelerating cache. Translation, the 5N has a small slot on the bottom that lets you insert a special kind of relatively inexpensive, super-fast, solid-state drive that will improve performance even more. Think of it as safely supercharging your Drobo 5N. The Drobo 5N delivers over 90 MB per second and can saturate a gigabit Ethernet connection. Translation, it is fast over wireless. Very fast. Very, very fast. You can add apps like Plex, Copy, and Elephant Drive along with other community-created apps. Translation, you can make your Drobo 5N into a media server or a personal cloud, with more capabilities coming. Perhaps best of all, all of your Macs can access your Drobo 5N for storage of photos, videos, documents, whatever you want everyone to have access to. So you can be in the den working on a business presentation, someone else can be listening to music, and someone else could be browsing photos, all from the same drive. Yeah, I know, I'm oversimplifying a bit. The point is that the Drobo 5N is fast, expandable, convenient, and protects your data unlike any other storage solution. So go get one, now, at drobostore.com and get an extra 10% off using the code MV10. Or from Amazon or B&H Photo, where there are special deals until December 23rd. That's not much time, so get going. And let me know you did with a tweet to me, at Chuck Joyner with the hashtag Drobo4MV. That's with the number four. Drobo, smart storage that grows with you and protects what matters. Thanks to Drobo for sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. So for round three, Wally, how about if I let you start this one off? Okay. Um, how about a straight old fastball this time? Nothing fancy. But I'm going to recommend, now it may be a little late for Christmas, but you can do this maybe for Ukrainian Christmas, which is early January, so there's still time for that. But I'm going to recommend a plain old Apple book, a picture book. If you're like me, you end up at the end of the year with lots and lots of photos in iPhoto or Aperture. Well, what I've been doing for the last few years is Come January, I assemble the best of my photos, the ones that are most memorable, maybe the most photogenic, uh, 
typical of some of the adventures during the year, and I lay them out in uh, Aperture into an Apple book. I upload it to Apple, and it comes back in about 10 days, and they are absolutely fantastic. Um, it's a coffee table book. You can get them in a hardcover, a soft cover, or a coil back. Uh, they come in various sizes. There's a 13 by 10, there's an 8.5 by 11, and there's some smaller ones. Prices vary. Uh, so for a 20 page book, 13 by 10, hardcover, that's top of the line, uh, that's about $50 and it goes down to about ten dollars uh, for the smaller sizes. You can add pages, so if twenty pages isn't enough you can go all the way up to a hundred pages. That's a pretty hefty book and that'll cost you something like hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy dollars. But um, if you like coffee table books and you like to see your own pictures in print, I've got to say the print quality is absolutely outstanding. Even photos that you look at and say, well, it's not bad, it's good enough for the book. When they come back, you'd be surprised at how good they look. Um, so I like to do that um, every January. I put together a yearbook of the highlights of the past year, send it off. It comes 10 days later, and it's wonderful to look at that uh, during uh, the next year. You don't have to do a yearbook. You can do a special event. You can do a special occasion, or uh, you can use it kind of a portfolio to show off examples of your work, whether you're an artist or a photographer or any other kind of work. So, Apple Books, uh, a, a great idea. You can get calendars also, incidentally, if you give those as gifts or cards or get photos printed. But the Apple Books, I think, are tremendous. Have you, have you ever ordered one? I have not, I, but it's no? funny you should say it. I just uh, had a friend who was showing me some books uh, that were printed by a competitor who I shall not name, yeah. and they looked good. But I've seen the Apple Books, and there's a richness to the Apple Books. I don't know whether they they take a little extra care with your photos or what. But these were these were okay, but they just weren't the Apple Books. Greg, that, have you a, ever tried it? Or uh, the Apple Books? No, I haven't. I've seen others uh, from them from other people. Yeah, you're you're encouraging me. You're getting me uh, sort of inspired here. Yeah, they're fantastic. That's actually a really good idea, and I wish I had thought of that earlier. Um, the, we had our first uh, baby this year, and that would have been a real, that'd be a really good present for my wife because I, I bought an EOS M um, for his birth, and so I've taken all these photos, and most of them are pretty high quality, even if I'm a pretty lousy photographer. So th that would make a that would make a great present. And um, now I've never ordered any of the books, or I've never ordered anything from iPhoto itself. But I did. Um, you, I, I actually used the Cards app that Apple has since discontinued, and we actually used it for our wedding invitation. And it, it was really good. It was it was quite nice. I'm I'm sad they let it go. Yes, I was also sad to see cards go. I used it pretty regularly, and I was very happy with the results. Yeah. See, that's it's a little tricky because um, taking photos is so easy now with digital photography. But you end up with so many photos that it's hard to um, access them all. Sure, you can look at them on the computer screen. You could uh, turn them into a screensaver on your Apple TV, for example. Um, you can create slideshows. You can do all sorts of stuff. But you don't really appreciate the photos quite as much as you'd like. And I find that the tactile feel of, of the book gives you that sensation. It's wonderful to sit in an easy chair and uh, flip through the pages and reminisce about uh, things that you've done and seen. So, great idea. Yeah. And Josh, maybe if you, if you stay up late tonight, you can still get it in time for Christmas. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do that. Uh, I, I I do print things from um, Walgreens occasionally, which is eh, so so quality, but it's like ten cents a print. So if if you ever need like cheap prints, that, that's not a bad place to go, and you can pick them up in under an hour. And you know, I just print off a bunch of baby pictures, and I put them wherever. And if I lose one or I rip one, eh, it doesn't matter. I can just go print off another one really cheap. So that's another tip to go alongside that. If the Apple books are a little too rich for your blood, yeah. Uh, Greg, how about if we go to you on round three? What do you got? Okay. Um, my pick is for the gift that you're going to give yourself um, or what to blow your, your Christmas money on. Um, and uh, mine is a, an internal solid-state drive. 
Um, and so now this is not entirely for the faint of heart, and that's why I said this is either you, you yourself are interested in this or not. Uh, but if you are, um, I used this to breathe life into. I had an early 2011 MacBook Pro, and I knew I wanted a second generation Retina MacBook Pro, and it was getting pretty long in the tooth, and it was getting slow. Um, and so I replaced its internal solid state drive with one from Otherworld Computing. Uh, they have the uh, 480 gigabyte Mercury Extreme Pro 6G, uh, which is now under $500. Um, and if you shop around, you might even be able to do better than that. Uh, and it's an absolutely fantastic product. Uh, super fast. Their videos to you know go through how to install it are just top notch. Um, you know, at, at first I was reluctant. I thought about the idea, and then I watched their video. Then I was sure I wanted to do it. Uh, you know, after their video, it's like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. Um, then I went crazy, and you know, we had a Mac Mini we were about to ship off, and I was like, well, really, I should put an SSD in that. And I had an early 20, 2008 iMac that now is actually usable. So you know. Uh, I have to give a nod to Otherworld Computing for their amazing videos um, and for their excellent internal solid state drive products. Good choice. Good choice. So making uh, the dollar go a little bit longer and getting better performance to boot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Can't nice. go wrong. I mean, I, I got one for my, I have a 2011 uh, MacBook Pro 15 inch, and I got a Samsung 840 uh, 500 gig SSD earlier this year, and it totally changed my computing experience. And, and these things get cheaper all the time. I saw, I saw one for, uh, it was like a 960 a gigabyte model for uh, about 500 bucks on sale for Cyber Monday, uh, linked off of Boing Boing. So yeah, I mean, they, they get cheaper every year. And, and once you use one, you'll never go back. Yeah, boy, isn't that the truth. That's, it's, it's a dangerous trip because once you go, anything that you have is going to seem slow. Yep. yep. Handy for those photos and photo books, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, iPhoto is still slow, no matter what you do. So I, I apologize in advance. Nothing you do will make iPhoto fast. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Josh, I think you have uh, one more to do in round three, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I'm last in the round. Um, uh, that's what I get for picking bizarre uh, homemade 3D printed uh, <laughs> gifts. Uh, so, so for this one, I, I will throw a, a regular ball to go back to our baseball analogy and uh, also do a little more shameless self-promotion and recommend the Take Control ebook series uh, for gifts. And, and with the reason, and, and you have to be careful, like I'm the kind of guy who will give people advice books and, and tech books. You have to be careful who you give those to. Some people don't take them the right way. Um, but if you have someone who is receptive, then the Take Control series is great because they're they're meant to be easy to read and quick to read. You don't have to spend hours going through a 900-page manual. And, and importantly, they're DRM-free. So you can load them on a thumb drive and wrap it up nicely and actually give it to them. You know, that's one of the worst things about eBooks. Um, yeah. replacing physical books is, you know, when you gave somebody a book, you could wrap it up nice and, and give it to them. Well, now, if you give somebody a Kindle book, you have to, like, e email it to them and say, oh, hey, Merry Christmas, I just emailed you a book. Why don't you check it out? You know, that's lame. That takes all the fun out of it. So, uh, lots of great titles to choose from. Looking at some now, uh, Take Control of Launch Bar, Take Control of Your Paperless Office. Uh, here's a nice one, Take Control of Your Online Privacy, Take Control of 1Password. Um, if you wait a while, uh, Take Control of Apple TV. Hopefully it should be in January, so uh, you can give them an uh, uh, IOU for that if you like. Um, but, you know, because they are DRM-free, you can load. The, and um, so I'm not completely uh, just uh, um, self-promoting here. Uh, O'Reilly also offers DRM-free ebooks for techie types. So those are two good things. You can, you know, if you know somebody who, who wants to study up on stuff, Buy them some DRM-free uh, ebooks, put them on a thumb drive, wrap it up real nice for them, and it makes a lovely gift. And they keep the thumb drive. And then, Josh, when you do the show notes, you're you're going to put take control of PDF Pen Six and take control of Text Expander as examples. Ab and absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Well, we, we don't have anything to promote, but if we did, I would want somebody to write a take control book about it. No question. Yeah. I yeah. know you've had uh, Joe Kissel, Kissel on more than once, uh, Chuck. Yeah, Joe's yeah. written uh, some really good books in that series. Yeah. He's, wrote, he's written at least 36 books this year, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, been, he, he's prolific. 
Uh, yes. And and but all the take control authors, Joe Joe is very yeah, perfect. They're, they're fantastic. They're they're absolutely fantastic. And you know, the books are edited well so that they stay on point. You know, you don't have to look at something that talks about the history of electricity. You just get down to okay, you plug it in and that's that's my worst analogy of the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the other nice thing about the take control books is when there's an update, you've got a nice little email saying, oh, by the way, there's a 1.1 version now, and you're mm -hmm. welcome to download it. Yep. So they, they try to keep up to date with uh, uh, things as they change. Mm -hmm. And there's a link right in the document where you can update it um, from right yeah. inside the PDF. Right. Well, my I had to lean around to get this. Um, my pick for this round is this little guy right here. Um, this is a Logitech trackpad. It's not an Apple trackpad. It looks a lot like an Apple trackpad, but it's a rechargeable trackpad so that you don't have to continually batteries. burn batteries or, you know, inevitably have the rechargeable ones go out on you at the very time that you need them the most. Um, I, this is about 30 bucks, and I have found it to be just absolutely feature parity with a regular Apple trackpad. Uh, all the gestures work, whether they're my regularly used gestures or not. Um, Better Touch Tool seems to support it as well. I just have nothing bad to say about it. And, you know, I figure for about two or three, four sets of batteries, I've got a trackpad like this. And uh, this, along with a rechargeable, excuse me, a, a solar-powered keyboard that I picked in another round, means that I don't have to keep stock of double A's anymore, which I really like. Um, so yeah, Logitech trackpad, rechargeable for about 30 bucks. I think you'll love it. Mm. I think I'm getting that solar keyboard for Christmas. Uh, I heard a little whisper from Santa, so I'm, I'm going to have to get that trackpad to go along with it. But yeah, it becomes such a pain changing out the key, the batteries and the Apple wireless keyboard and the, and the and the trackpad. I mean, yeah, they're, they're great devices, but I even have the Apple charger, and it seems like every other day I have to turn around and rip the batteries out and switch them out. So. Yeah, and, and that's, unfortunately, it always seems to happen right when I don't have the time to do it right then, mm -hmm. you know, and so with, I use a, uh, my MacBook Pro, um, you know, with the external keyboard and, and the trackpad. Um, and so at least I have a backup, you know, if it goes mm -hmm. bad, but if it's the iMac or something else, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. so. Now on the on the trackpad, is it like the keyboard where you can switch between three different devices, or is it just uh, paired to one device? No, just paired to one device. No, I'm 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 hoping that someone will come out with that option, a, a solar powered, switchable trackpad. But so far, no joy. Yeah. You can't have everything, at least not in the first round. Yeah, that's for <laughs> next year's episode. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Exactly. Okay, so I'm. Good on time. Are you all good for uh, the fourth round? Great. All right. Greg, how about if we go back to you to start round four? Okay. I'm going to go for, for something fairly simple and basic. Um, it's a laser printer, just a straight old monochrome laser printer. Um, but, you know, if you have one that's old or that isn't wireless or that's loud, uh, then I'd recommend considering it's the Brother HL 2270DW. Um, it's duplex, which, okay, and then Josh is pointing to one behind him. Um, yeah, it's just an absolutely fantastic printer. Um, you know, it's it's small, it's quiet, it's fast, it's duplex. Um, the consumables are not super expensive. It does. I mean, it comes with a starter cartridge, just like any laser printer now. Uh, but then it also, you know, you can buy the regular size cartridge for around 40 or 50 bucks and the printer itself is 110 dollars at, at amazon right now uh so you know it's relatively inexpensive and just a super workhorse i've had mine for i think t at least two or three years now and uh and i'm delighted with it Good. Yeah, you can actually get it for as low as 75 uh which is why i got mine for yeah and um what one tip i wrote a review of it for tidbits uh one tip if, for anyone out there who buys one don't try to use their wireless setup it is not good Pl plug it directly into th your computer through usb and let it set up through there and then it'll set up your wireless for you and then you can move it wherever you want in the room if you try to do it like, um, I tried to set up through my airport express and through that capability, that didn't work well. I tried using the, the wireless option, the software, that did not work well. The software, uh, the setup software isn't great, but yeah, if you do the USB sync setup, it, it takes five minutes, be easy, and then you just uh, put it where you want in the room, and it works flawlessly. 
I think there was even a little yellow paper in my box that said, do the US piece. <laughs> <Did it? laughs> so, that was probably my fault. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, that, that's great. It's, it's amazing how we've gotten away from printers. You don't hear recommendations or that much written about them anymore. So it's nice that you can give us a, an option that you feel comfortable recommending. Oh, yeah. Well, when you're returning a package to Amazon, you can't tape your iPad to the box. <laughs> UPS frowns upon that. Yeah, good point. Good point. Okay. Um, while we have it, if we let you go second in the fourth round. All right. This is a SanDisk Connect wireless media drive. Why would you want a little black hockey puck? Well, um, I have a habit of filling up my iPad uh, very quickly and my iPhone. Um, I got my iPad and my iPad mini before they had 128 gig models. So they're both 64 gig and they're overflowing, almost overflowing. So uh, when I travel, I like to take some extra videos or movies along with me, but I've got to uh, jettison a lot of stuff before I can put them on. Well, this thing actually gives you either 32 gigs or 64 gigs of extra storage for your iDevices. And the neat thing is it uh, connects via uh, Wi-Fi, its own Wi-Fi, to your iDevice and streams those videos or that music for you. So you can fill it up with 64 gigs of video if you want, sit on the plane, connect to it, uh, via Wi-Fi and enjoy all of your movies. The way it works is you download the SanDisk app. Um, you have it on your iPhone or your iPad and you look for this in the settings panel. You connect to it and away you go. Very neat. Uh, it also has a uh, SD card slot on the side so if you want to put extra storage on uh, more music, more movies, more photos, more anything, stick the SD card in there and you're in business. Uh, it costs, for the 32 gig model, it costs $80. If you get the 64 gig model, it is $100. Of course, if you're in the market for a new iPad mini, for example, just get the 128 gig model and you're all set. Now, can more than one person use that at one time? Yes. Yes. Oh, awesome. We were in yeah. a situation where we were on, you know, we got split across the aisle, and I yeah. had a movie, but we were out of luck. So that would be fantastic. Yes. You, multiple people can uh, log into it. Neat. The battery life, um, I, honestly, I can't remember, but it's something like six or eight hours. So you can probably get to Korea or something on an airplane and watch a few movies. Cool. That's that's great, and it's so it's solid state, and it's yes. you, don't, you don't have any speed problems uh, as as far as streaming the movies. None at all that I've found. Wow, and it's it's really small. I mean, you you literally can fit it in your pocket or your Scotty vest or um, in, in uh, just in your suitcase, and it takes up very little room, and it seems to work really well. Very nice. Okay. Um. So let's see, Josh. You third? Yeah, you're third, right? Uh, I, I am once again you're, you're in third. last place. <laughs> well, um, no, I'm in last place, Josh. So. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. That's yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> so, so I, me, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I have something to uh, put in your Scotty vest or Scotty shirt or hopefully not Scotty underwear, but, you know, if that's your thing, <laughs> and that is a multi-tool. This one is the Leatherman Wave. This oh, yeah. is about 13 years old. Um, they last a long time. They have a 25-year warranty. Um, so this one still has about 12 years left on it before it just falls apart on me. But that's okay, because um, I've had it since the year 2000. They don't make this one anymore, I don't think, but they the current one uh, and the top wire cutter pick, and by the way, if you ever need great recommendations for things, wirecutter.com picks the best product in any category. Uh, their top pick for multi-tool is the Leatherman New Wave, which goes for about $60 to $70. has some more advanced features than this one. It has, um, you can put screwdriver bits in it, um, you know, some fancy things like that. But, you know, most importantly, it has, you know, a regular straight knife. You probably don't want to try to take that on the airplane. They'll be very cross with you. also has a um, serrated knife, which is great for packages, which I'm sure you're opening up a lot of this time of year. has a 
a file, uh, a saw, you know, which actually does come in handy sometimes. I've actually cut wood with this thing. It's not recommended, but um, it works in a pinch. Uh, of course, pliers, you know, e you've seen these. I'm sure everyone's seen these things before, but they make great gifts. They last a long time, and they're truly handy. And, and once you have one, if you manage to not lose it, I've lost this one a few times, but I always find it again. And it's, it's a great companion to have for many years. Right. Yeah, that's. You need the Find My Leatherman app on your iPhone. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> That'll be next year's model with yeah. built-in Wi-Fi. I wouldn't want to do the search for that. That could go <laughs> yeah. differently. They'll put you on a watch list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I, 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 I see what you did. There. Yeah, I, yeah, I did too. I just got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Um, Greg, there's there's shades of your personality we didn't know about. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm going to follow Greg a little bit on something that's sort of old school. Um, he he talked about a printer. I'm going to talk about a scanner. And a scanner is something that I think with as Wally said, we're taking digital photos now, so we really don't need to scan that many things. But once in a while, uh, you you have a document you'd like to scan in. You have something that, uh, as as good as as Greg's utility for my iPhone is, um, it doesn't really handle, for example, photos. And and I've you've heard me talk on the show about scanning old family photos. Now, if you have a bunch of Polaroids and that kind of thing, you want to go to a scanning service. There's no question about it. So let's just put that off to the side. But if you have larger format photos or things that are a little too fragile maybe to make the trip or that you just don't want to risk, you want to get those digitized as quickly as possible because, you know, they're they're fading and they're falling apart right now. So I've got two scanner recommendations. The first one is the Canon's CanoScan LIDE 110. Folks, you know, we all remember when the can when the scanners used to be three, four, five hundred dollars. This thing is fifty bucks. Right? Oh. You can't afford not to buy this. This is 2400 by 4800 resolution. If you don't mind spending $20 more, buy the LIDE 210, which gives you 4800 by 4800 scanning. That's more than adequate for anything you're going to want to do at home. Unless you're doing something, you know, if, if you're doing more than that, take it to a professional somewhere. Um, these things have not a bad footprint at all. And again, 50 to $70 to have a scanner and be able to digitize anything that you have out there is just fantastic. Um, Canon has great software, but even if you just jump in and use what comes with your Mac, that's good enough. You know, the whole idea is to just make it quick and dirty, get it into your Mac, and then you have it preserved and can do what you want. So don't overlook the scanner. Don't think it's something necessarily from yesteryear because it really isn't. And man, are they affordable now. It's, it's almost, if you have a big stocking, it's a stocking stuffer. Second recommendation, I have a Canon LIDE 200 myself and love it. Yeah, uh, the 200, okay, that'd probably be... It's one, an older model. Yeah, it's, from yeah. the 210, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think I have one that's a little older than that, Greg, but it still does a great job for me, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, I, I still remember the original Apple black and white scanner for about fifteen hundred dollars back in the day. Wow, all the way down to five hundred uh, to fifty. Yeah, I mean fifty it's bucks. Amazing. I, that is amazing. When I looked it up, I was shocked. It's like no, this has to be a typo, and yeah. no, here it is. So wow. there you go, guys. That's a nice diverse set of picks. Uh, some dark horses in there and some really strange things, but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it fun. Well, and you did, did you have a second scanner pick, or did I mishear you? Uh, no, the the uh, one ten okay. and two ten were the oh, gotcha, were gotcha. Two, okay. you know, tr I mean, if, if for, for the for the for the people that are on a budget, the fifty dollars scanner scanner for the extravagant people, the seventy dollars scanner. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I just had on too long. <laughs> well, I noticed you've been sipping the eggnog. I was going to say, so. it might be the eggnog <laughs> by now. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I hope you all have a happy holiday. Thank you so much for uh, serving on this edition of the Mac Jury. It, it's a lot of fun. Um, Greg Scown, Josh Shunners, Wally Cherwinski. Thank you. Thanks Pleasure you. hanging out with you guys. You. We'll do it again. Nice meeting you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Bye. Folks, again. Show notes for everything we picked so that you can just go right there. You don't have to bother Google at all. Until the next time, I'm Chuck Joyner.
This is Mac Voices. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, app.net, Google+, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date with all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Happy holidays. Happy Kwanzaa. Anybody want to sing? <laughs> Just sing. Uh, Are you serious? No. <laughs> if you want to, Greg, I, I, Greg, if you sing, I promise I'll put it in the outtakes. I promise. We want them to have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Wait, all right. Not a hellish Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>